So uh, this is uh, for, um, uh, I want you to do redo in simulation. Uh, one of the demos that I've done in the past. So this is uh, something that you have seen in lecture video with uh, rolling the, um, the uh, disc, and a, um, a disc and a ring together. And um, the, you know, the video itself is fine. The demo itself, I think, uh, worked out well. But the kind of the downside of these uh, de physical demonstrations is that there are always some uh, physical um, imperfections. And here, one thing I will tell you, which you might have seen if you watch the video, is um, <laughs> is um, the the ring is a little bit uh, distorted. So depending on where it starts, sometimes it'll um, kind of be neck and neck with the disc. Sometimes it'll um, definitely loose and it, it's not as repeatable as I'd like it to be again because of the uh, real world imperfections and when you um, see it do that um, you will kind of see that so this uh, is the demo why is he talking so much <laughs> <laughs> is he about to do it yet not yet Is the demo ever going to happen? Uh, one second. All right, all right, all right. Um, so, you know, when you watch the demos, okay, here it definitely loses. And when you see it repeated a few other times, sometimes you will see it um, be more of a neck and neck. So uh, one thing that uh, I think, uh, so I wanted to do was uh, redo this in simulation because Simulated the world is a perfect world. It's one where we can change the parameters. We can um, get rid of certain things, and um, so so I wanted to redo this in simulation and um, kind of explore uh, some things that that's hard to explore in a physical demo. So I just built this. Uh, this is uh, so these are all glued to the background so that they won't move. The spheres they are uh, not glued. And they've been given properties so that they won't bounce around. There's still some friction so that when I let the simulation run, it'll roll, not um, um, not slide. So okay, these two identical objects they you know roll together kind of at the same rate. All right, that's uh, good. So uh, let me first start by replicating what we've done in the physical demo. So I'm going to replace one of these with the uh, with the ring shape instead of the um, instead of the instead of the disk uh, kind of distribution so uh, let me change its color so that I can distinguish them better blue color okay purple color and I need to cut this uh, let me see if I remember how to do this um, so if I, oh, that's a little too close. Okay, so, and I think the way it should be done is I just select it and then combine shapes, cut. Then it'll cut whatever was behind it. Yeah, good, good, good. Okay, so I cut it and I um, uh, think doing that got rid of the, let me do this thing. Um, because I do kind of need uh, some marker to tell me if it's rotating or not. So I'm going to uh, uh, make my own marker that tells me, oops, that tells me uh, which point of the ring is where. So I'm gonna put this together. And, um, and just so that this doesn't affect anything, I'll make its mass uh, really tiny as small as they can make, they let me make it. And I'll combine these two masses together. Uh, geometry actions, glue it together, okay. So, and let's see what happens. So, when I let the simulation run, you see the disk is now rolling faster. 
than this ring. And you might say, oh, uh, but that's because the, the mass of the ring changed. This is not as, uh, with the whole, this whole thing cut out, it's not as heavy as that. Now, if you are familiar with, uh, you know, how things um, behave under gravitational force only, then that shouldn't matter, it should cancel out, but let's just make them actual same mass so that that's not a consideration anymore. I'm going to just make both of them one kilogram in the simulation. Uh, make this one kilogram. So if anything, this is actually slightly heavier with that little thing added of as tiny as I can make it. Now, when I let them roll, then the disc still wins. And in the lecture, you see me do the calculation with some of the scenarios. With the, um, so the way the calculation you would do is you do the calculation of conservation of energy. So um, both of these start out with the same. Now that the masses are the same, they say me the start. They start with the same gravitational potential energy, or you know they undergo the same change in gravitational potential energy in this simulation. And the change in gravitational potential energy, because this is a setup that conserves energy, it'll go into other forms of energy. And the two forms of energy goes to is uh, translational kinetic energy and rotational kinetic energy. And given the same rate of rotation, this ring with a higher rotational inertia requires, um, it takes a greater rotational kinetic energy to be doing the same rotation. So, um, so for example, if I change the properties of these objects, so give them no friction, um, that'll make them slide rather than roll, then you will see that these two actually slide down at the same speed. So let them slide down. They slide down identically. They don't, um, you know, it's, it, it's uh, any difference between these two comes from the rolling. So, and the exact friction uh, coefficient value doesn't matter as long as it's high enough that it can roll without sleeping. So, um, so when you do that analysis, you know, set up your conservation of energy equation, this change in gravitational potential energy equal to this term for translational kinetic energy plus this term for rotational kinetic energy. And the difference between these two is what is I, the rotation inertia. And the thing with the greater rotation inertia given the same change in height, we'll have the smaller um, angular velocity, which will also mean smaller translational speed through the rolling without sleeping condition. So, so that's the uh, simulation version of that demo that you saw physically. Now with the simulation, we can do other things. So if you've done that derivation that I described, you will um, have seen that um, the actual radius of the thing doesn't matter because um, the radius cancels out in the derivation. So this could be a super tiny thing. And um, as long as I, um, let me use the back of the, uh, back of the two circular things as the reference point. And um, you will see that, um, that the size doesn't matter. So, um, so, let me put it this way. So, uh, so the previous size, with this previous size, let me make sure that it has friction. Okay. So we'll do a quick measurement of how much they are far apart by the time the disk reaches this end. So, uh, so let me um, mark the differences between the boxes this way. I, I can do it this way. Um, so, okay, that's. Kind of close enough. So I'm going to be have some error in where I stop it, but I think it's going to be fine. It won't affect things too much. And in terms of measuring the difference in the edges, the way I can do it is I can take this um, and I can, you know, have this box uh, start at the edge of the, the disk and end at the edge of the um, edge of the the ring, at the far edge of the ring. Okay, I'll have this set aside so that I can um, refer to it later, and then uh, we'll move this back. Move this back, 
And I'm just going to let the simulation run one more time to be, oh, you know what? I know what the issue was. This, when I moved it back this way, it has an inherited velocity. I should have zeroed out the velocity. <laughs> I forgot to do that. <laughs> let me zero out the velocity here so that it doesn't have inherited velocity anymore. Yeah, that's what I forgot. So it wasn't a real actual glitch in the simulation so much as me forgetting that um, these objects, even after you move it, has velocities. So let me make sure that these, uh, they were not working the way they are supposed to. Uh, I think it's because they have a rotate angular velocity. So let me make sure they don't have angular velocity. <laughs> uh. Material. Um, a velocity, no angular velocity, and I think I have to make sure that this uh, loses all its velocity. Uh, oh, okay, it's lost it. Okay, let's double check that we did nothing change. That these two still reach the bottom uh, the same way. Okay, uh, yeah, and uh, okay, measuring the ends, they kind of match. Good, good, good. So now I can just uh, undo, undo, and it'll start out at the same velocity, zero. And now I can uh, change the parameters of this. So uh, from the derivation, hopefully you have a sense that when you change the radius of this ring, that it's not really going to um, affect anything. The amount by which this falls behind should still be exactly the same. So let's give that a try and see if uh, simulation confirms that derivation result. So we'll let it run. And I'll try to stop it. Okay. Oh, good, good. So that's the uh, same point where I stopped it before. And measuring the distance doesn't quite work. <laughs> um, if I had to guess, um, that mess might have played a little bit of role. So let me do it this way. Gonna undo, undo. So I'm gonna make the mass of this um, the same as the mass of uh, the disk, uh, mainly so that the relative mass between the uh, ring and this uh, little tiny thing is, you know, small. Uh, and let's try running it again. And if uh, it doesn't give me the result I'm looking for again, I'm just gonna have to, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the, the far edges, they match up. So the amount by which this ring has fallen behind matches up exactly. So um, as long as that, um, so that tiny little piece that I attached to be able to tell when it's, uh, uh, you know, when it's uh, sliding, when it's rolling, that kind of acted like the defect in the physical setup that I was describing earlier. Um, so anyways, um, so let, to wrap up this uh, simulation demo, let's just uh, uh, go back to where these were just sliding. So I'm going to get rid of friction and make them slide. So if they're sliding, then they should be sliding at the same rate. There shouldn't be any difference. Let's see if that's the case. Kind of looks that way. Let's check. Far edge, where I... Why are they different? <laughs> they shouldn't be different. <laughs> um, uh, it might be because of the mass again. Uh, looking back, I think, yeah, because of the mass, uh, this uh, ring didn't actually just uh, slide. It, um, so it slid and it was rotating a little bit as well, maybe. Or not, I don't know, I can't tell. Um, Let me do it this way. I know they are going to be sliding, so let me get rid of that circle. That's a, my physical imperfection. They are both sliding. Let's see. No, this is still sliding faster. I have no idea why it's sliding faster. It shouldn't be. Um, so, you know, as they are sliding, okay, here. So if they, these two edges matched up here, then by the time they've slid the same distance, they should have slid the same distance. I don't know why they're different. <laughs> um, but, you know, this is the simulation glitch, maybe. Um, if we had more time, I would have probably personally tried to figure out. So, you know, if I'm doing, I'll go do for more serious work. 
then this kind of discrepancy between what I expect from my derivation and my, what my simulation shows, there might be something worth um, investigating to make sure that as you're doing s a serious work with a simulation that it doesn't give you faulty predictions. But um, I'm just playing, so <laughs> let me end this here. <laughs> this is the end of this demonstration. Um, I will edit this into some version that I think I can uh, link uh, in the this part of the video. Um, so after this, I can kind of put in a video about the, the simulation demo of this. Um, it's a kind of uh, invitation for people to play with the algorithm. Um,